Okay, last part. Uh, this is uh, part three of the lecture. Uh, how do we evaluate investments with multiple investment and working capital cash flows? Uh, investment proposals often include investment cash outflows at varying points throughout the life of the project. So in reality, you don't just spend money up front or at the end. You spend money probably throughout the life cycle of a project. Some at the beginning, some in the middle, some at the end. Uh, examples, expansion of facilities in future year, working capital investments to fund and increase in inventory in the future year. <clears throat> so investment proposals often include investment cash outflows at varying points throughout the life cycle of projects such as items uh, such as the rate uh, or such as the return of working capital right so sometimes you may get cash inflows so uh, like the like the surplus or, or the salvage value money that's going to go back into your business unit uh, these cash outflows and inflows must be included with every uh, with ev evaluating investment proposals using net present value uh, internal rate of return and payback period methods so you want to understand the impact uh, that income taxes have on capital budgeting decisions, right? So we can't just ignore taxes or wait till the end of the year to deal with them, but, uh, but we have to know and understand that, that taxes do definitely come into play. So how do income taxes impact capital budgeting decisions? Most firms, other than not-for-profit not or non-profit, um, and uh, government agencies must pay income taxes, right? Work at a private company, you have to pay income taxes. Uh, firms that pay income taxes must consider the effect of these taxes on cash flows. So you can't, like I said, just can't ignore it. Uh, typically, revenues and related cash flows uh, generated uh, by investment increase taxable income, and therefore the taxes must be paid. Expenses and the re uh, related cash outflows reduce taxable income. So what adjustments must be made to the cash flows when income taxes are involved? Uh, investment and working capital cash flows are not adjusted uh, because these cash flows do not affect, ta affect taxable income, right? So not looking at investment, not looking at working capital cash flows. Uh, but revenue uh, cash inflows and expense cash outflows are adjusted by multiplying the cash flow uh, times uh, one minus the tax rate, right? So meaning one, if your tax rate is 0.40 or 40%, then one, uh, it's going to be multiplied that times uh, 0.60. So cash flows before taxes, so investment cash flows, you see there's no adjustment necessary. Uh, cash flow does not affect uh, taxable uh, uh, net income. Uh, working capital cash outflow and inflow also not affected, so no adjustment necessary. Uh, cash flow does not affect uh, taxable net income. Uh, but with revenue uh, cash inflow and expense cash outflow, you multiply uh, by 1 minus the tax rate. Right, so like I said, if, if the tax rate is 40, 40% uh, 40 in decimal form is 0 0.40. Uh, so 1 minus the 0 0.40 is uh, 0.60, right? So you multiply it by 0.60, uh, and, and the same would, would apply uh, there. So that's uh, for your revenue cash inflow and your expense uh, cash outflow. So how does depreciation affect cash flows when income uh, taxes are involved? Well, you see in some of the problems, definitely in the book, it shows that uh, you have you know some of this uh, depreciation, but it's written off on your taxes. So that actually works in your favor as, a, as somewhat of a tax shield. So although depreciation expense is not a cash outflow, it provides cash tax savings. The depreciation tax shield is a tax savings that result from depreciation. The tax savings uh, is calculated by multiplying the depreciation expense by the tax rate. So once all of the adjustments have been made, calculate net present value uh, as shown earlier. Uh, the next slide shows an example of Scientific Products, Inc., a company uh, considering the products of scientific instruments uh, for a large uh, school district. All right, so if you look at this, uh, you see net present value calculation uh, with income taxes for scientific products. Well, say, well, how does it work? Purchase price four hundred thousand. Working capital is a, a negative uh, fifty thousand. So you see here we've got negative four hundred fifty thousand. Uh, but these are long term investments. Of course, it's going to be all negative upfront at the very beginning. Uh, annual after cash uh, tax receipts. You see this thirty thousand, uh, thirty six thousand, seventy two thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, and seventy eight thousand. Well. 
just if you want to go on the legend and follow me on this because I don't want you to get confused if you look right down here it says for year one uh, it's 30,000 so if you it's somewhere in it's on I don't know what page it's on but if you if you're looking through the textbook it's it's right there in this chapter and it gives you some numbers and it says hey these are numbers and the first number is 50,000 for year one and um, I guess it's um, is it 36 or 60,000 for week two, right? And then it goes on and shows you the different numbers. But how do you come up with this num these numbers right here, right? So you take your uh, <clears throat> uh, 50,000, right? Because 50,000 for the first year, and you multiply it by 1 minus uh, 0 0.40, right? So that 50,000 times that 0 0.60 is 30,000, and that's where you get your 30,000 for right there. For year two, now you have 60,000, so you take your 60,000 times 1 minus 0 0.40 and you come up with a point, uh, point 0.60. So 60,000 times point 0.60 is 36,000 and you get that number. So if you f find that page, it has uh, five numbers there for you. You just multiply those numbers by point 0.60 and you will get all of your annual after tax cash receipts, which is that line right there. You get all of those. Then your annual uh, depreciation for tax saving is 32,000 all across the board. Uh, and that is also here in the legend. So if you see $400,000 cost, right, divided by five years, um, <clears throat> right, so I uh, lost my place for a second, $400,000 cost divided by five uh, years, right, and you come up with the uh, annual depreciation tax savings of $32,000, right? And how did you get that? You take your $80,000 uh, depreciation expense, right, and you multiply it by uh, 0.40 and you have your $32,000, right? So uh, annual depreciation tax savings is $32,000, and you just put that for each year, right? So it's going to be the same replicated for every year. So your total cash uh, in and out, so $450,000 is all going out. You add these two together, and you get your amounts, right? Your present value factor. Remember how we get those using your tables at the back? And you get that, and you just multiply those numbers by each other. And so negative 450000 then you add all of these up, and the net between all of these combined is a negative 56146 So do you think that that's a decision uh, that's going to be favorable to the company? Uh, more than likely, it definitely is not, and I'll tell you that it's not. So that is the last slide uh, for, uh, for Chapter 8, uh, Section 7. Uh, be sure to uh, take your quiz this week. Uh, there will actually not be a homework assignment, so hooray for that one. Uh, not sure if I'll have a homework assignment for, uh, for Chapter 9 either. Uh, we'll see. But uh, for Chapter 8, no homework assignment, so you're just responsible uh, for watching the lecture, checking out the supplemental videos, and taking your quiz. Uh, next week uh, we'll have chapter 9 which will be the final and uh, shore up everything have another quiz and then uh, your, your last test will be made available as well as always have a good day and a great week if you have any questions be sure to email me and I'll be sure to assist